Hello everybody, today I'm talking about the solar eclipse in Scorpio. This is on 14th of December, uh, very close to the Gandanta degree, but not in Gandanta, which is a good aspect of it. However, uh, solar eclipses always bring uh, unsettled, disturbed energy, and we should be aware of it. So let us explore. Hello, I'm Komela Sutton, and we are talking about the solar eclipse on 14th of December. Uh, please do remember to subscribe, press the bell notification. As we are coming towards the end of 2020, I'm going to start talking about what to expect in 2021. Uh, so uh, if you are subscribed and the bell notification, you'll get that information instantly. And uh, so what about the eclipse of 14th of December uh, 2020? It is... Um, uh, actually, quite an important eclipse. Uh, the same eclipse on the same day happened on uh, 14th of December in uh, 2001. So this is like a eclipse being replicated. Uh, if you remember, 2001 was post the 9-11 um, uh, in USA and other areas of the world, often eclipses are more about politics and world uh, events. And you can see earthquakes happening around that time, some big unexpected change or expected change happening around the eclipses as well, and political change, uh, uh, political upheaval as well, because the eclipses are very hard to judge how they are going to manifest themselves. And of course, you know, we already had the lunar eclipse on 29th, 30th of November, and then uh, we are going to get this solar eclipse following the lunar eclipse. One of the things I always observe is that the time between the lunar and the solar eclipses, that is always an unsettled time. Uh, so we should try to avoid doing things, uh, uh, you know, right from end of November to uh, uh, 14th of uh, December. But then there is the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction on 21st of December. So, you know, we get this sort of December as a time to lay, lay low. And the reason I talk about the planets and tell you what the planets are there, not uh, to, um, you know, worry you, but for you to make uh, reason choices so that you know these energies are disturbed and you can accordingly alter your behavior. You can alter what you're going to do. Uh, so that is very important. However, if um, uh, you know you uh, follow astrology over the years, then you will see these impacts and how well it helps you uh, when you know the uh, unsettled energy. So the 14th of uh, December 2020, so 19 years ago, they had a 14th of December then, uh, 2001. And uh, so this is kind of an important eclipse and uh, transformative. Uh, Scorpio is always about transformation, change. Um, Scorpio doesn't like change because it's a fixed sign. So when the eclipse is taking place in Scorpio, we resist change. We think we should stay where we are, but the eclipse is telling that the change is necessary and you need to move on and be open to uh, transformation. Transformation can be on a physical level, it can be on a mental level, it can be on a spiritual level. So there can be any types of transformation. The eclipse is taking place in Jaishta Nakshatra. And Jaishta is the Nakshatra where uh, is about fighting uh, with our inner demons so that we can uh, emerge victorious. So uh, they can be always is thinking about certain personal weaknesses that we want to change and transform uh, and, uh, you know, be receptive to this change as well. Uh, so don't feel that just because I am in where I am, nothing can change. It means that if you are uh, open to it, you will find that the situations will develop. 
Sometimes there are small blessings that we look at. This eclipse is at 28 degrees, 59 minutes of Scorpio. The Gandanta zone starts at 29 uh, degrees, 12 minutes. So this is just outside Gandanta. Uh, so the eclipse is not on Gandanta and uh, however very close to it so we have to be conscious of it gandanta is a spiritual knot that uh, you know when these events take place it can unravel the situation so it can uh, bring some uh, you know um, things to light and uh, sometimes the situation is uh, very fixed and we are not able to uh, change that energy. Uh, so then it can be uh, a crisis because we are uh, resisting the change. Uh, however, this uh, eclipse is just past the Gandanta, so that is good. Usually for eclipses, we see the degree of the sun. Uh, Ketu is at 25 degrees, so it's about three degrees away from the sun. And this is a Ketu eclipse. So uh, Ketu eclipse is connected to past life and past issues and uh, because Ketu deals with past. But Ketu is also Jnana Karaka. He is, signifies wisdom and knowledge. Uh, therefore, it uh, brings uh, uh, knowledge to us as well. If we remain calm and uh, just uh, deal with the eclipse, you may find that something more knowledgeable is coming to you. Some wisdom is shining at you. Uh, so, um, and alongside with uh, sun and moon, sun and moon are also always involved in the eclipse and eclipses take place with new moon. So right at the exact moment of new moon, uh, the eclipse is exact. And uh, uh, so uh, sun and moon, that means Leo and Cancer. If you are Leo, Cancer, Ascendant or uh, moon sign, then uh, you are automatically affected. All eclipses will affect you. Uh, how really depends, you see later on, I'll talk about it as well, but uh, depends on your personal practice, what you're doing and uh, how calm you're staying during these eclipse times. And uh, uh, then Mercury and Venus are in uh, the eclipse. Uh, so they are part, uh, both of them are in Scorpio and Mercury is very close to Ketu. Uh, Venus is not so close, but they are all part of the eclipse. So we have Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus. And Mercury rules signs uh, Virgo and Gemini and Venus rules signs Taurus and Libra. You are also in uh, the direct zone of the eclipse so you can feel the stress it may not be that uh, you are uh, uh, directly um, impacted in the sense it's not in your signs but because your ruler is placed there uh, there is uh, definitely uh, some uh, uh, unsettled, disturbed energy around you and, you know, taking steps to calm yourself down. That is the whole idea of understanding these eclipses. Now, the eclipse is going to be uh, at its uh, intensity at uh, 4 p.m. The eclipse is visible in uh, just the edge of South Africa and it will be visible in the Atlantic. It is visible in uh, south of South America, and then it is visible in Pacific. Area that it will affect will be mostly the countries uh, right at south of uh, America, although uh, it is visible partial or total in most of South America. So you need to be not in North America at all. Uh, so political situation there, some unexpected changes, weather patterns, um, you know, there can be some uh, earthquakes you can watch out for. It's always uh, tough to say exactly what is going to happen. But, uh, you know, this is just an omen for uh, unsettled, whether they are weather patterns or earth patterns or political patterns, because the eclipse is affecting everybody. However, the rest of the world, the eclipse is not visible. But I always find that the day before the eclipse, on the day of the eclipse, the mind feels very unsettled. And before uh, I was aware that this was caused by astrology, I always felt I should be doing something. And this is how you may feel restless or you feel uh, heavy emotionally and uh, the 
aspect is that you are trying to do opposite of what you should be doing. You should be keeping yourself busy, doing uh, less stressful activity and not making any major decisions. Uh, so after the eclipse is over, the energy becomes much easier to deal with. You'll feel that almost as if uh, some uh, clearance has taken place. Uh, however, in December, and do watch out for my December planetary news, uh, there is the Jupiter Saturn conjunction on 21st of December. So we have to wait for that before we make any decision. So how does it affect you personally? Remember that uh, unless you have a sun, moon, uh, ascendant in those exact degrees or close to those degrees, that is uh, 28 minutes, 59 minutes of uh, Scorpio. Uh, those are the ones you get most affected. If your birthday is on 14th of December, uh, 13th, 14th, 15th of December, then the eclipse is very close to your sun sign. Uh, however, even if the eclipse is close to you, the change, transformation, these eclipses repeat themselves, you know, after seven, eight years. That means that uh, you have uh, a natural change that is taking place. So as I said before, that uh, it is a, a good idea not to resist the change. But you may have other planets it's placed on those degrees. You could have, uh, uh, you know, Venus, Mercury, uh, Jupiter, Saturn. So if you have planets at the end of Scorpio, then this eclipse is going to impact you more than uh, others. But uh, let us explore the signs. So with every sign I'm looking at, you can study your uh, Moon sign, your ascendant. Ascendant is very important because that's the exact time that you are born. That is how we take out the ascendant and the sun sign as well. Aries. Now, Aries, Mars is not involved in the eclipse. However, the eclipse is in your eighth house of uh, transformation and change. And eighth house is also connected to uh, your spouse or partner's money or other people's money. So uh, this eclipse can bring out some information, some uh, unsettled energy. However, Mars is totally out of the eclipse, so you may not feel it totally. For Taurus, the eclipse is in your seventh house of marriage relationships. You have just had a lunar eclipse on uh, your uh, ascendant or moon sign. Uh, now this is the opposite. So you are quite affected. Uh, you are thinking about change um, and transformation. You may not be as yet acting on it. Uh, the next eclipse, the solar eclipse, is going to be in Taurus in June 2021. So you need to watch out for. But at this moment, the uh, Lord of your um, uh, Ascendant, uh, Venus, is also part of uh, the Eclipse. Lord of your Moon sign uh, is, uh, if your Taurus is in the part of the Eclipse. So uh, it is quite um, intense. Now, one word about Moon and Taurus. Uh, because uh, Rahu is going over your moon, I don't know the degrees of your moon, but you should check that out. Uh, so you feel, your mind feels unsettled, whereas um, uh, Ketu is in the seventh house from your moon. So uh, Ketu is uh, uh, disturbing the area of relationships for you. Uh, Gemini, the eclipse is in your sixth house, health, healing, uh, uh, you know, opposition, uh, your uh, ascendant ruler is also part of it. So this is, eclipse can be quite impactful to you. So, um, Mercury Ketu conjunction is on the 12th and the eclipse is on the 14th. So uh, uh, definitely keep uh, life simple around it. Don't be in a hurry to do things. Uh, uh, you know, take uh, your time. Know this is disturbed energy. Wait for Mercury to go into um, uh, Sagittarius, I made a video about Mercury in Scorpio. You can uh, listen to that as well. I'll put a link. Uh, cancer, Cancer, of course, Moon is always involved in solar and lunar eclipses. So for you, as a matter of principle, you should be uh, thinking that when this eclipse season is on between this uh, solar and lunar eclipses, that time you're keeping life simple, not making any important decisions. 
the eclipse in Scorpio is connected to your children, uh, fifth house. So uh, creativity, ideas, higher mind. Uh, the children can be a handful. You may have to deal with some issue connected to them. Uh, so be aware of it, but also of your own energy that you are uh, feeling unsettled. Yo sun is involved in the solar eclipse always so same as i said to cancer that leo should watch out the lunar and the solar eclipses and the time in between because the whole energy is disturbed now uh, leo is the power planet they like to be at power but rahu ketu will always uh, dominate because they are the ones that cause the eclipse and sun is with ketu and quite close to ketu and therefore you have to be extremely conscious of it. Also watch my video on sun's uh, transit through Scorpio so for some further information. But uh, this is a time for change and don't be rigid with yourself and uh, transform and uh, sometimes uh, you know you may get wrong type of people giving you advice so be careful about that. Leo, the eclipse is taking place in your fourth house, home. Uh, so you may be considering home, changing of home. You never like to make those changes, but uh, the eclipse is telling me that either you need to make some uh, internal changes in the home you are living in or you are thinking about moving. There is another eclipse coming this way, so it may not be right now. It is just an indication. Too. Virgo, again, uh, your uh, planet Mercury is part of this eclipse. It's in Scorpio. Scorpio is your third house. Third house is a house of uh, uh, action, what you want to do. And uh, so uh, better not to do much around this time. Uh, and especially Mercury Ketu uh, 12th and then the eclipse and then Mercury goes through Gandanta. Uh, this is like a week uh, or 15 days of unsettled energy for you. So keep that in mind and therefore don't push for things. Stay where you are and then wait for Mercury to go into Sagittarius. Uh, Libra, uh, Venus is part of the eclipse and uh, Venus, uh, uh, the eclipse is in the second house of money. So uh, financial things should be uh, always taken with care around this eclipse. Don't make any major decisions. Wait till after the eclipse is over to decide what you want to do and that will be the best thing. And uh, Venus is also part of the eclipse. It's in Scorpio, not so happy and there'll be Venus Ketu conjunction. Uh, and you can watch uh, the Venus in Scorpio video that I post. I haven't done that as yet, so I can't put a link to you. Uh, Scorpio, you are experiencing the eclipse. So regardless of what degree your planets are, uh, whether you have zero degree or 30 degrees, uh, this eclipse is affecting you. It is an indication because the further eclipses may come closer to your uh, Scorpio degree. However, if you have your ascendant, sun, moon, uh, between 25 to 30 degrees of Scorpio, this one is uh, most intense for you. Nothing will happen on the eclipse day. It is a omen or an indication for transformation and change. Uh, there is always some uh, kind of uh, feeling that I want to change. And Scorpio also being a fixed sign is not always comfortable with change. So uh, you need to just watch for that and keep uh, these days simple. Uh, one good news is that uh, Mars is well placed for you. Mars is in uh, uh, Pisces, it's your fifth house. It is not a part of the eclipse. So you can a little bit detach from your situation. However, do watch out for this um, eclipse. Sagittarius, the eclipse is taking place in your 12th house. So uh, 12th house is house of expenses. So keep a very tight control over your expenses. Um, your ruling planet Jupiter is in the second house, about to have the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, and then you have the uh, uh, eclipse in the 12th house. So uh, saving, spending, uh, both areas are there. And I would say that around the eclipse, a week after that, till 21st of uh, uh, 
December, you are being very cautious. And definitely, I would say defer any financial uh, dealings till after the uh, new year, and you will be very happy about that. Uh, Capricorn, uh, Saturn is not part of the eclipse, uh, uh, but the eclipse is taking place in the 11th house of earnings. So uh, there can be some unexpected uh, change regarding earnings. Now, especially if you are Capricorn moon, uh, then you are in Sade Sati. So this, uh, you are feeling uh, under the weather, intense uh, energy of Sade Sati and the eclipse happening. Uh, so uh, definitely not to deal with anything connected to your earning or profiting from life during this time. It's a good idea to be more spiritual, to allow this uh, uh, time to pass. And then, of course, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction as well, which takes place immediately after the eclipse. Aquarius, Aquarius, the eclipse is in the 10th house. So a 10th house can show a change of job, unexpected uh, and change doesn't have to be negative. Often you see during eclipses, people can get a great push and rise up in the job. I've seen number of people uh, getting elected or getting uh, a great job. However, it is an unsettled energy. So if uh, the event is happening naturally, that is okay, but don't push for it around that time. That is the best thing. And uh, your ascendant or moon ruler is in the 12th house. So there can be some foreign connection as well, desire to make change. Uh, but uh, the eclipse is focusing on uh, the uh, 10th house. Uh, Pisces, uh, the eclipse is happening in your ninth house. Ninth house is the house of the guru. It's the house of the advisor. Uh, so uh, not the best time to take advice around that time. And uh, as you know, I'm Pisces. I always take care around that time. <laughs> Eclipses. I'm watching the planets, but I also follow them. And over the years, I've found that that has really helped me uh, with uh, working with my uh, energy. Energy. And uh, uh, you see that uh, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is also taking place on 21st of December. So we are watching always when the transits follow one after the other. It's always a complex time. So for all of you, I would say that, uh, you know, restraint, not being afraid of the eclipses, but understanding the uh, disturbed energy. So therefore, when uh, you are thinking about making any choices, or decisions, you think, oh, am I thinking correctly? This is the eclipse season. Uh, let me think about it later and uh, allow that, uh, give yourself permission to delay the situation. And uh, that would be the best aspect. All the best. Do remember to subscribe. Thank you very much.